The world is not a happy place. A trip to the countryside means being torn apart by a pack of monsters. A good month means only one or two villagers have died painfully. Being oh. fit and healthy means you still have half your working teeth. It's perhaps not surprising that oh, children that's the colonial are days. It's like high fantasy midi- uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it takes place in a broad medieval fantasy setting in and around a cold northern area. Perhaps not surprising that children here are tough, cynical little buggers. I almost said something completely different. Thank God I read that. <laughs> Ask any kid if Santa's real and they'll laugh at you before they steal your coin purse. Of course not. The parents, however, know better. Winter Miss has always been a day of celebration. Ah, uh, yes, copyright around. free. I like it. Hey, this is this Who is the fuck a... owns the copyright to Christmas. I know. I'm just sorry. I'm just messing. <laughs> I'm surprised. I would not be surprised if Disney somehow bought it. Uh, um, yep. 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 Well, this is a fan made like PDF. So this is fair. It's a day to celebrate. Uh, uh, day to gather around the fire to drink and eat. But the presents are a mystery. Not long ago, beautiful little toys, sweets, and cookies started appearing in every house across the land. All labeled from Santa. Every winter miss morning, without fail, most people love these presents and accept it as a blessing. But there are others who seek competition. Now, it's the night before winter miss. You boys are all huddled in the large stone archway of a tall, narrow five story tower. The wind howls, the cold is biting, thick snow obscures your view beyond a few meters. A discreet brass sign on the door advertised. Happy Joy Toy and Tobacco Company, Northern Region Headquarters, Frosthold. You know that your interview is in five minutes. And it appears from the various people standing around you, which one of you feels you're not the only one assigned for, for this job. So with the three of you standing there, what would you like to do? I mean, I guess I'm just going to stand there and look at people. All right. Well, I guess we can use this time if you guys want to introduce your characters. Oh, yeah. sure. Uh, who wants to go first? We we can say, uh, judging by what I know of Jordan's character's backstory, you would probably be standing next to the door that leads into leads into the building. Mm -hmm. So... It would, uh, you would know that behind you, behind that door lies the receptionist area. So, okay. I mean, so, so do you want me to go first? On, Is that what you're saying? Four's on to you. You can go around ahead. You boys see. Do we want to roll initiative to figure it out? Or well, no, do we... that's what I'm trying. Are, are you hinting that you want me to go first? Yes, because we will stay here all day trying to figure out who wants to go first. Okay. <laughs> <All> right, <fine. laughs> All right, yeah, I'm first, and I'm excited to introduce this character. <laughs> uh, Johnny McJolly Bobbins <laughs> is a mark of scribing gnome. Um, he's uh, he's three 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 foot three, but he's three foot five in heels. <laughs> uh, he's got slicked back hair and a handlebar mustache. Dark. <laughs> Um, Wait, so is, is this a greaser gnome in heels? Is that what I'm getting? <laughs> uh, he looks like he's about the age of 69. He's uh, green eyes, emerald green eyes, uh, and he's definitely trying to play off the appearance of an elf. Hmm. Very short elf. <laughs> <laughs> no, like a, a traditional Santa Claus elf. Yes, I'm just saying is like everyone knows like elves don't have facial hair, right? At least in some <laughs> fantasy settings, and I've always I always go back to that same setting. It's like yeah, elves don't grow facial hair, but then you'll see like D and D pictures where it's like this elf has like this massive fucking goatee. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Oh, that kind of just destroys the the image in my mind. Yeah, uh, I don't know where it came from that elves were supposedly hairless. I don't know where that came from. I guess Tolkien. Oh, maybe. Might, might be token. Maybe. As cynical 
psychotic of writing as that man is, is a very good descriptor, I gotta tell you that much. A little too good sometimes, but... I mean, he wasn't all that cynical. It wasn't the word I was looking for. For some reason, it slipped out of my mouth. <laughs> oh, I got you. Alright. Next so, up. It's a little buff oh. dude. Yeah, just waiting by the door, I guess. I just have this image of this, like, biker gnome in fucking elevator. <laughs> yeah. Like, Same. Shoes. Like, the early metal platform shoes with the soles that are five inches tall. Oh. <laughs> Welcome. Next up. Ricky, is it you or me? Uh, well, I'll go something. Uh, next up is Twerk. The half work, half chair. Wild <laughs> magic barbarian. Amazing. Oh, God. Yes. Yes. I I'm gonna... How how did how how did your backstory go that you're half orc half chair again? Oh, so I didn't even write the backstory, but basically, basically, Santa was very angry at me for being competition, and was like, "Fuck you, so you're gonna be a half boy." So he turned, he like changed me into like a half chair. You were competition for it Santa. Wasn't, it wasn't the fact that he was competition; it was the fact that he was so naughty to try to teach him a lesson. Oh dear God! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, that's like fifty-eight and like under eighty pounds, but like I think it was like five eleven is what I put. Yeah. Okay. And then just for a visual description for Jordan, it's like a centaur, you know, except the the. The seat of the chair, the back of the chair is at the front. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Wait, does that mean he gets disadvantage on stealth if we're on tile? <laughs> yeah, because it's just... It's gonna be... clunk, clunk, no, no, clunk, right. clunk, I was clunk. imagining it was a chair, like the legs of the chair were the legs of the centaur. Yeah. And like his torso was coming out of the back of the chair. I think yeah, that's what it is. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, he said it was on the front, and I was concerned. I was like, so is it a horse's no. ass with a chair for a horse? <laughs> <laughs> no, so it, it, it's, oh. it's on the back of the chair, but instead of it, like, being, like, you know, sitting down normally, it's the other direction. Yeah, yeah. Dear God. Dear God, Ricky. It's like that. I told you I was going to do it. And you did it. Don't get me wrong, you did. Oof. Better here than that, than horrors by Twilight. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> no, I, you would have been the first one dead <laughs> if you had tried to pull that shit. <laughs> there, there is no pulling punches with horrors by Twilight. I'm sorry that it. There is a mechanic in the story base that if you guys die, if I think you mean when. Well, I just hope your new characters like fighting your old characters. So, um, great. Yeah, a little fucking paranoia in there. And then finally, we have for our last competitor on this vile, vile winter's miss. Multiple tag. We got this barrel-chested, seven-foot-four bald man, like meaty limbs. Like, imagine if you cross the two. Thief guys from one hundred and one Dalmatians. <laughs> oh, he's got a really mean scar in some kind of symbol shape over his left eye, and that eye's a little bit cloudy. He's just got a, an unassuming smile. Just standing in the corner. He's wearing a red suit with a white shirt and a red tie. Come. This sounds. Hold on. Computer's chugging like a fucking piece of shit right now for some reason. Somebody's got a potato. Oh yeah, I I forgot to tell you guys my um. I think I figured out the problem with my computer. I think it's my hard drive. Really? And it's on its way out, and I'm I might get like an SSD. Uh, don't forget, if you want to completely copy over the OS, you can get a drive docker with a copy function. 
Okay. So you don't have to reinstall the OS or anything. You just plug both drives in, hit the button, you let it sit for a few hours, copies everything over, and you're good to go. Let me do that. Where is that? What are you looking Why for? Why is my, my sheet's not up? My sheet's not updating. No. Your your description reminds me of something. And I'm trying to find it. I mean, Maybe I'm it. playing like Evil Lurch. Yes, but. Give me one second. I might have skipped past it. No, this actually might be an old video of his. Fuck. Uh... Ah, ah, ah. Here's one. What? What's going find... on? What's the name of this game? I think it's. Images. I don't think that's actually the name of the game. Fuck. What is? What are you looking for, Jacob? Ah, anyways, uh, you boys are gonna be walking into this reception area, and you see more motivational posters. And adverts for dubiously uh, virtuous Happy Joy products line the walls. An advert for a teddy bear. And the slogan on it says, That really smokes catches your eye. <laughs> and at the desk is a very bored recep looking receptionist. Is using a slate tablet and chalk. Um, she looks highly uninterested in even talking to any of you. But she does motion you over and ask for your names and classes. And oh, this is where you were supposed to describe yourselves. Okay, well, fuck you, game. <laughs> Players are. I so mean, we can still say some of our class, I guess. I don't know. I mean, if you want to say anything at this point, be my guest. I mean, y'all already know I'm a puppeteer. Y'all are both barbarians. This is going to be interesting. Barbarian rogue, actually. Avery, excuse me. It's the it's a barbarian rogue. Um, so barbarian. We. So once you are, we? she writes down all your guys' information. She directs you. She doesn't even look up at you. She just kind of like waves her hand over to a lift. Uh, and you see a team of gnomes pulling it. Like they they're next to the lift and the 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 fucking cables up. Like going up, and there's like a whole team of gnomes getting ready to pull on the cable to raise the lift. Mortimer worries walk... about these things being able to lift him. Oh, it's perfectly fine because as the three of you settle into the lift, they start pulling, and the lead gnome starts making elevator sounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The entire, like, the, the five gnomes behind him are... Wait, wait, what, what is it? What, I want to it, Yeah, it's like an acapella group doing music. Yes. It, it's just... Bum, 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 bum. I would like to nod to them being fellow gnomes. <laughs> they they kind of do give you a little stink guy because you got out of elevator duty for today. Oh. <laughs> got out of elevator duty. <laughs> <laughs> and they take you straight up to the top floor. And this is the CEO's head office. Quentin Happy Joy, you would know this. Uh, I do apologize. What the hell did you say your name, gnome name was? Johnny McJolly Bobbins. Johnny, <laughs> yeah, Johnny. You would know this as Quentin Happy Joy's office. You've only been here probably once. Like during the very early days of your tenure here with the company, uh -huh. you are you are role playing as you're from the company, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so as you it, you know you hear next to the elevator a few sounds of grunting and like low <laughs> and you hear a very exhausted. 
<laughs> and the like, slowly slide open, but it feels like someone's like pulling on them. Like there's a gnome oh, it's, on either side. It's just Star Trek pulling. doors. Yeah, it, it's just a gnome on either side just pulling these, the, these like very light, basically cardboard doors open. Jeez. Do they foosh or do they creak? That's my question. No, they just they just like drag. They're, okay. they're just like, uh, they're metal, but they're hollow inside, so they're just dragging on the floor, and that's all you hear is just. <laughs> Dear God. And you walk out, and you see a large painted portrait of a smiling man in a purple suit, holding a bunch of colorful balloons. Takes up most of the right wall. A small plaque underneath it reads quentin happy joy senior founder happy joy family toy Com company mm, yes you remember you were at happy joy toy and tobacco company so somewhere along the line someone decided hey what what would be a better idea than making toys but making tobacco products as well Bar time to hybridize <laughs> Which explains the smoke, the actual smoking teddy bear. Yep. Um, the far wall of the room is entirely taken up by a large window through which you can only see snow blowing past. It's a large la winter landscape. The only item of furniture is a dark mahogany desk holding a neat stack of parchment, a magical Newton's cradle, and a slate tablet. Newton's crater is that little thing with the five balls that when one hits, the one on the other side yeah. comes swings. Yeah. I was just explaining. I didn't know if Ricky knew what a Newton's table is. Sorry. Newton's cradle. In front of you is the grayest man you have ever seen. This is Quentin Happy Joy Jr. Corporate businessman before his time. He'll brief... Uh, he's going to give y'all a little brief interview you know he's looking up from his desk so you three are the ones assigned to join this assignment that I've uh, done small little advertisements for this music I have playing is perfect <laughs> Is it bum 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 no. bum Mr. Sandman? No. Oh dear God. So, at that point, does anyone want to say anything? I mean, are we already hired for the job? Because Tag is really just gonna stand there and look yes, pretty. Yes. 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 The very fact that you're standing in front of me means I've chosen the three of you. Mostly because no one else would make it. Wonderful. Yes, you were the only ones able to brave the cold, apparently. The dwarves decided that they were better use elsewhere. Then again, trying to sneak in to where, they're, where you're going as dwarves is a little redundant. We've uh, sent scouts to the location that you're going to be dispatched to. To no surprise, you're going to go to the North Pole. We're going to send you into what is called Santa's Workshop. So I should bring an extra jacket. I Wonderful. Johnny grits his teeth. <laughs> Yes, yes. Unfortunately, none of our scouts have returned, and we've only received the briefest notes by Sending Stone. The entrance lies in the glacial crevasse. Ah, patrolling flying creatures, apparently. Enchanted holy barbed wire, holly barbed wire, and candy mines along the top. Something unclear about no man's land. Mines is in explosives, or are they digging for candy? No, they're explosives full of candy. Understood. Like a piñata. A piñata, you... but it breaks itself. Interesting. 
Yes, you will each be paid right up front 250 gold pieces. Wonderful. And a further 750 gold pieces each upon completion. Hmm. We're looking for any information in the workings of said workshop and, well, should some unfortunate accident happen that delays or even completely destroys the occupation and procedures there in, well, there may be a little bonus for you. We yeah. have corporate espionage. I don't know what that, what, what you're talking about. I don't understand. Um, this is just a mere uh, representation business meeting, if you would. And he kind of, like, narrows his eyes at you <clears throat> for using such crass language. Don't worry, Johnny. We're just paying them a visit. And I kind of lean down and put my hand on your shoulder. I'm like that's on my a, knee to get down I was, there. I was gonna say that is a fucking lean guy. <laughs> you are free. You will leave in an hour. You're free to go to the nearby town square if you need to pick up any kind of supplies or <clears throat> business equipment, as they say. Uh, we will. Have my corporate mages teleport you to the location when you're ready. <laughs> Why, thank you, sir. Johnny, Johnny is not the brightest knife in the tool shed, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> what What is the chair demon doing? Just running him back and forth in the corner. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, then. <laughs> He's attempting to. He walk. Uh, the chair demon decides to walk up to the desk, turn around, and sit like his chair end, facing the desk like a regular chair would be, and is per just pretending to like fit into the situation. You know what? Can I put Johnny in the chair? I, 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 I don't have an issue with it. Why like, can't I just go there myself? Why does everybody have to tote me around? Well, I mean, you're like. Three, I mean, I don't know, you're like child-sized to Mortimer, so he's kind of like... Johnny has a strange flashback to a frog being put <laughs> yeah. into a bucket of water by a giant turtle. <laughs> <laughs> so, would, would you guys, are you guys already kitted out, or do you need to go pick things up? I think the only thing I up. would be looking for would be, like, smoke bombs. I have nothing but this money. Oh, alright. Well. Sorry, I have holes in my mouth. Quentin's a bit of a bitch to fucking voice. So. Ah, uh, very well. We will. My receptionist will direct you to the town square. And he just kind of like, you know how, like, Bitchy businessmen will just like wave their hand away to dismiss you. Yeah. Yeah. He, he just like like that. the he the just... backhand wave. Yeah, he just raises his hand, just like start, starts like go motions you back to the elevator. I do have a question though. Mm. Does he have no like sidebar? Does he have a statue of himself? Um, in in the one corner, like where you're facing him. You would see it to your right. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Yes, it, it's a much younger statue. Oh, um, the glory and, days. Got it. Yeah, and judging by his build now, comparative to the statue, it is highly, heavily... Um, Idealized? Yeah, so like broad fucking chest, rippling, you know, eight-pack abs... Humongous bulge in the business man. <laughs> like lo long flowing hair yeah, behind him. Yeah, yeah Mort man. Mortimer is just gonna look at it and then meet the guy's gaze and just nod. Once I knocked over my soda. Oh shit! It's okay. Is the keyboard safe? Yeah, it went away from everything important. Thank God. Okay. You don't have carpet, do you? 
No, but I got pants. Oh, well, I mean, you could change your pants. I yeah. I concerned about your carpet pants. Yeah, no, it's good. We're good. All right. So you guys turn back, go to the elevator, and you see, the, like, the team of gnomes up here are still kind of, like, leaning up against the wall, one hand on their hip. <laughs> and they see you guys, and, like, the lead gnome just kind of, like, throws his hands up in the air, in the air, and, like, fucking rolls his eyes and gets grabs the rope. <laughs> Otherwise, I would be no damn rest today. Well, we He's can't exactly out jump here. out the window, can we? You want to jump out a fifth a fifth story window? Be my guest. I said we wouldn't. As yeah, in, yeah. your services are required. Yeah, yeah. Just get in, get in the box, big guy. I I the... I step in, I guess. You get in the box and two gnomes slowly slide the doors back close. And then you hear more exertion this time as they try to slowly lower you down without dropping the box with the elevator. <laughs> and you hear a little more fast paced and hurried. Ba -ba -da. <laughs> I did. You get down back to the reception office, you step out, and um, if anyone looks, the team of gnomes down here are all laying flat on the ground. Because <laughs> they are, you know, they're the counterweights to each other. Right. Oof. Yeah. And, um, I'd like to do the, uh, like to do that thing from fucking Avengers, where I just, like, lean down and speak in gnomish, I'm like, hail Hydra. Except not Hydra, whatever... Shadow organization, this is. Three of the gnomes give you quizzical looks, and two of them just like put their fish to their chest and repeat. <laughs> <laughs> Mortimer just raises his eyebrow. Does Mortimer, Mortimer speak gnomish? No, just looking at what's happening, it's like, well, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> As a mercenary, I know this is not my concern, however. Yes, yes. <laughs> Put their head to their chest and <laughs> Pork is just gonna sit there and dance around like a horse. <laughs> oh dear god. So, um, <laughs> you are directed by the receptionist. Uh, she tells you, yeah, you leave, like, the building. You go take a right outside the door and, like, it's like a 10 minute walk in the town and uh i'm not really gonna time you guys while you're doing this but um there is a let me scroll down here since you want to go find some shit nope that's the conclusion nope our maps included or <laughs> no no this is all theater in the mind my friend this is fandling okay <laughs> We're adjacent. Uh, <clears throat> Frosthold is, you would know, uh, Johnny, and maybe Mortimer and um, Bull Boy. Uh, <laughs> this is, is the biggest town in the region, but it's not really saying much as every other town's like a small, like, you would, like a Viking clan or something type, you know, a tribal type village of, of maybe 20 some people so it's more akin to like an outpost yeah uh it's a circular walled town atop a hill four gates at the cardinal points north south east and west um heading towards the center there's a small square where most of the action seems to be happening like all the shops uh there's a bard singing with uh winter miss carols locals and guardsmen are watching you know, you think he might have a little bit of a hold on them because they're, like, just in awe. Uh, I mean, he's square. a bard, so he probably rolled a charisma saving throw. More of a performance check, but say it'll be. Uh, around the square, there's a blacksmith that is also a leather worker, a combined general store and tavern on the corner with the windows covered up, and there's a temple, temple of Helm in town. 
It's also a few merchants selling their wares from stalls near the center, uh, including an alchemist, a jeweler, and a few tradesmen selling wintermist tr trees and treats. Uh, Johnny would know this is a very tough town with a tough reputation today. There, There's a general happy hubbub as the people go about their preparations. The smells of roasted meat and chestnuts fill the air. The, you know, usually it's a town full of gruff northern workers, uh, work being hard, conditions unforgiving. It's like cold all year round, basically. And today happens to be one of the coldest days of the season. You know, it's probably roughly around 15, 20 degrees outside. Um... Which, uh, I, I've got a question. Hey, Ricky. Your character. Mm -hmm. I know he's half chair. <laughs> Does the chair have feel anything? <laughs> Does it, what? Do you have Does a nervous it? system in your chair portion? Well, being that, you know, it was... My lower half was changed to a chair, yes. Oh, so it's just like I'm... Okay, magical, fucked up polymorph. Got it. <laughs> it becomes permanent. Yeah. So, are you wearing anything? Um, it's like twenty degrees outside. Good question. Uh, chair pants. We're gonna make chair pants. That's the thing. So yes. Is this that meme of like, if centaurs wore pants, how would they wear them? Yes. Mm, gotcha. Okay. Wait, what if it's just chair, a tablecloth? Basically. It's a skirt. It's gonna be a very <laughs> breezy, you're going to have a very breezy time now. You gotta wear a bloody kilt in this weather. It's respectable. Yes. It's like 12 kilts, but yes. <laughs> 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 Twelve kilts layered on top of each other. Um, Jesus Christ. So, Johnny, you would know that the primary business here in this town is hunting. Uh, collecting and processing bone and ivory for Happy Joy's toys. Um, well, people have, usually have, like, the rough northern accent. About everybody you guys pass is just, you know, greets you with a smile and just, Gee golly, mister! Oh Happy winter, miss! Have a wonderful day! Yeah, to you as well. Um, they're, they're very happy and joyous on this one day of the year where they can forget about, you know, uh, what you would know as the donkey blight. <laughs> Uh, the pain pox and uh, the band of attacks and the constant fear of <laughs> donkey plight. Yeah, uh, all it, it mainly just affects the children. Um, if Mortimer you know, was, looks like, over to post. one of his barbarian companions, I wonder if that has anything to do with you. No, it's uh, it's basically when the children misbehave consistently and just become like just little shits uh they uh, slowly turn into donkeys ah okay interesting then um, they have the pain pox which is kind of like the chicken pox but it's just like where you would have like the rashes from chicken pox you just have like what feels like a brillo pad full of needles just poking at you Ooh, so more like yeah. shingles huh yeah basically um, then obviously the bandit attacks because you know bone and ivory sell for a lot in other towns and the constant fear of the packs of wild monsters and the cold killing like one or two people a month um, for further elaboration if anyone's ever seen the anime movie Pinocchio uh, it doesn't say anything here it just says about the donkey blight, and I just ripped that straight out of Pinocchio, so, um, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> uh, as you <clears throat> walk around, you know, you see the bar, you see the, 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 uh, dops, uh, 
You see, like, uh, Michael, uh, Michael C. Hammer's Smithy and Tanner. Uh, what is called the legitimate business tavern and store. That's Bob's always Bargain a good Bob sign. Yeah, you see a small little vendor called Bob's Bargain Bottles. Uh, another Bargain one, Bottles. Marvo's Miraculous Magical med uh, Medallions. And obviously you see the Temple of Helm, uh, probably to the, yeah, I'd say it's probably to the northeast. So, what do you boys want to do before we get kicked off into uh, magic the teleportation? I I need a weapon. You need Real a bad. weapon. Oh right. dear. So you're looking for Michael C. Hammer's Smithy and Tannery. Yes. I fucking love this PDF, I swear to God. Uh, it's a small, well-stocked shop selling the standard armory gear. You know, Michael sells all simple martial weapons and armor within reason. Um, uh, so you you figured it out. Yeah, I just imagine he's humming that under his breath while, while hammering away at a sword. <laughs> Sorry. So, he, you know, he's got, you know, your standard uh, dagger, scimitar, short sword, glaives. You know, he, he's... Uh... <clears throat> what do you uh what do you, you you see the man there and he's got very baggy pants on and a like a it's very warm in the store you see the fireplace is rolling so he's got very baggy pants on but he's got this vest buttoned up with nothing on underneath or over top of it <laughs> bald man I'm, I'm really glad everyone's getting the image that I'm trying to uh <laughs> um So, he greets y'all, and what can I do for you? Uh, I just need a few things. A, uh, <coughs> preferably a scimitar of some kind. Or not scimitar, I'm sorry, a rapier. I can't believe how you did this and you have, like, no weapons on you whatsoever. We're gonna no, be thought, rapier, I you brothers. Said we were getting money. I thought you said we started with money. I said you could. Oh, okay. So yeah. Right, then okay. Then let me add my stuff then. <laughs> oh jeez. Jesus Christ. Uh, we're professionals. Sorry. I swear we're professionals. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna let you go ahead and uh, someone's knocking. I'm gonna let you go ahead and add that stuff, and I'll be right back. Was there anything you needed, Ricky? Just a quick sidebar. Well, I think I have everything. That's what I'm trying to find out now. Um. So I know, um, he's doing his thing. Oh no, that's a throne weapon. Okay, I see. Never mind. I think I figured it out. I don't understand, because I picked this feet and I want to make sure I understand it. What feet is it? Um... Good question. Well, <laughs> it's the dual wielder feet. Second. Are you like all five levels barbarian? Da -da 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 -da. Yes. Oh, okay. If it ever loads. Master fighting with two weapons, gaining the following benefits. You gain a plus one bonus to AC while you are wielding a separate melee weapon in each hand. You can use two weapon fighting even when one-handed melee weapons you are wielding aren't light. You can draw or stow two one-handed weapons when you would normally be able to draw or stow only one. Yes. So, what's the question? How the fuck do I use two fucking weapons? Like, which two would I fucking pick? Well, it doesn't matter with this feat. Normally, you'd only be able to use two weapon fighting with two light weapons. 
Yeah, However, just, this just this over. Weapons. No, you just can't do two handed. Okay. Like I think you could possibly do like two do, like, long, two long swords, swords. Yeah. with this. Whereas normally you'd have to be like Kalak with two short swords because they're both light weapons. Yeah, because yeah, I picked the fucking hand axes not knowing they were throwing weapons. You can use them as melee. Yeah. The, they're like a dagger. You can use them as a melee weapon or a throwing weapon. I'm retarded. Well, it doesn't matter for me, actually, really, what I use them as. I we'll can just... turn anything I want into a throwing weapon. Technically, yes, but I believe improvised weapons technically get a D4. No. Unless you have a specific feat. What? That's, that's, that's the magic of the wild, wild magic barbarian. Okay, then. What did you do? He was trying oh, to figure man. out what he could do with the dual wielder feat. I think dual wielder allows any one-handed weapon to be used as a finesse weapon. As a light weapon. Light weapon, yes, because the uh, two weapon fighting, where like Kalak was using two daggers or two short swords, any one-handed weapon I think be, can be used that way. Exactly. Did you also get a plus one position. bonus to AC when wielding two weapons. You can draw and stow mm -hmm. two one-handed weapons. Yeah. And he Even thought that, though. for some reason, hand axes were thrown only. No, no, no. You can yeah. block people with a hand axe. It's like a javelin. You can use it like a spear, melee weapon. Like I said, it technically does not matter, because I can turn long swords into throwing weapons. I mean, you could throw, turn anything into a throwing weapon if you pass the... Ability check. Well, I mean, with the the wild soul or wild magic barbarian, um, what is it? If I get it, if I get a four when I roll at the start oh. of my rage, yeah, that shit. So, uh, did you add your stuff? Or... Yeah. So scratch the rapier. I just need a shield. Oh, shield. Uh. If, uh, would the three of you like to give me a perception check real quick? Sure. Perception. <laughs> 19. Okay. Just my keyboard. 21. Nice, nice. It's like a uh, easy 14, so it's not like super heavy. 13. 13. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it kind, of, it kind of fits, yeah. Uh, so Mortimer and uh, Johnny, you would. It is Mortimer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can also just call him Tag if you want. Tag. All right. It's kind of ah, I'm a little leery on that one because you know skin tag. Yeah. What does that have to? Okay. It's long story. Anyways, the two of you would happen to notice that there is a small secure cabinet behind his counter, and there's three weapons in there that look like plus one weapons. See a sales tag for about 750 gold pieces a piece. How much? 750 gold pieces. Oh. Um, I can't afford that. Well, it's in a secure cabinet behind the counter. Uh, they're plus one weapons. You see a a rapier, a small sword, and a... A short sword, I'm sorry. And a... Uh, fuck, I had the idea what was in it. Uh, long sword. Long sword. So it's basically three different types of swords. Um, if you're looking for a shield that's ten gold pieces, uh, he motions to his left, and along the wall you see the nice... You know, small wooden and steel... Or iron shields... There's really no difference between two of them. They're both, you know, plus two armor class. Yeah. Uh, just more whatever flavor you want. See right. some of the sh some of the shields are about like as big as uh, Mortimer's head, 
to as big as your entire body, Johnny. <laughs> so I'm I'm assuming you're going to want one of the smaller ones. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so go ahead and knock off ten gold pieces from your two fifty. Yeah. And uh Well hold on. So I have a small for being a rogue I have an extra fifteen gold. Oh, okay. Yeah, small, that's fine. A small pouch of gold or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead and just knock off ten gold from your total and add your shield. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. Like, any weapon and armor you want, you can find here. Uh, anything else, you'd have to, like, check the general store, probably, or one of the shops. So, anyone else want to get anything from, um, Michael C. Hammer? I wanted to, do you have any smoke MC bombs? Hammer. <laughs> ah, see, he gets it. He finally gets it. Uh, smoke bombs uh, n not personally no as you can see I'm just a smithy and a tanner I have weapons and armor anything of that uh, uh, utility you might want to check the tavern or yeah you, you're gonna want to check the tavern thank you sir alright so What's Ricky's character's name? What? Chork. Like, chair orc. Chork. Chork. Yeah, Discord, Discord was not liking that, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, being on, not. yeah being on your phone, it's not, uh, it's not doing you any service, son. Uh, I'm sorry. That's fine. Did you want anything from the store, Chork? Char? Uh... No, I, I think I I think I'm ready to go fuck shit up. <laughs> All right. Did you want to take a trip over to the tavern and general store? Oh yeah, I do. Fuck it. Sure. Yeah. All right. So potions and things would be nice. Yeah, the three of the three of you walk out of uh, Michael C. Hammer's Smithy and Tannery, and uh, just across the way you see uh, to the southwest you see the uh, 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 I'm sorry to the southeast northeast is the temple northwest is MC Hammer. Yeah, to the southeast you see what, you know, the large sign says, the legitimate business tavern yes. and store. I love this it. is a large single-story building. Uh, you see, you know, the general bar area. There's a small shop counter off to the side where you can purchase, you would imagine, food, drinks, alcohol, shit like that. Um... Since you're a rogue, you have thieves can, don't you? Yeah. Alright. Um You see uh etched in the very base at the very bottom, right above the flooring of this cat counter, uh you see in Thieves Can is the markings for fence. Oh so you, ah. fence. so you yourself would know that you can fence stolen items and you can access up uh Pretty, mu pretty much a small cat catalog of black market deals from most fences. Um, so you see, uh, it doesn't describe anybody, but um, you see uh, at the counter there is a relatively large blue dragonborn, you know, in basic leathery cotton commoner's clothing. It's a very nice comparative to most of the people you see walking outside and uh he's cleaning one of the glass you know cleaning a mug as he stares down at this very small human so, like a child um you see a his left leg is broken he has like a makeshift crutch he's counting out copper pieces very very slowly uh he's and it looks like he's trying to buy like the smallest pigeon you've ever seen. Like, like a bird pigeon? Yes, like oh. like to eat. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. So it's like a Cornish game hen, but imagine the Cornish game hen of a pigeon. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's like the size probably the size of like a hedgehog. Wow. I'm a... glad people 
know how big a hedgehog is. I'm, that was the first thing that came to mind for some reason. <laughs> hedgehog, most hedgehogs fit in the palm of your hand. Yeah. Like you can just hold them like a small ball. Um, you see he keeps dropping a few ch pieces of his change and starting over. Uh, he's very bad at counting. And um, him being at the counter kind of keeps you from being at the counter. Like, as the paying customer, you know, you... You know what? As civilized human beings, you would assume, oh, we're going to wait our turn for the customer to finish their, their transaction. But this is taking a very fucking long time. Mortimer is going to kneel right next to him. Jesus Christ. Child. Tell me what four plus five is, and I will give you a ration. Uh, I, um, eight? Well, so much for that hope. And I get up and walk away. <laughs> you kind of catch from the corner of your eye the, the dragonborn bartender's just got this pleading look in his eye, like, save me from this nonsense. All right, kid, other people have business to do. Step out of the way. Contra money. We'll do our transaction. Sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and it stumbles to, to move out of the way as you move yourself up and falls, and his coins go everywhere. Ha! <sighs> very... So now off to the side, you have this broken-legged child trying to count, pick up his coins, and... <laughs> Not, not really to be mean, but the bartender kind of just like gives a sigh of relief. Looks like gives you a thank, like a thank you look. <laughs> All right, quick sidebar. Well, how's his name, Timmy? Um, on the note, it is Tiny Tim. Yep. God damn it. Yeah, broken, bro broken leg. Make sure. Fuck yeah, structure. yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Child, survive this trial something... and you will only become stronger. I was expecting something much worse from Mortimer, but okay. I mean, he's lawful evil. What do you want? That, 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 that's on par. Yeah, that tracks. I was expecting, like, just, like, sneak up one of your dolls. So, like, <laughs> like, fucking, uh, Sada what is it? Sadaka? Sadako? The ring lady? Oh. Yeah, uh -oh. just like fucking hair down in her face, just sneak <laughs> up to the side of them instead of you coming up like, what's five plus four? <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to think of a way to get him away from the counter without, I don't know, being a total douchebag. Well, thank like you. Jericho, be evil. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm playing lawful evil here, so I'm not going to just murder uh, somebody in the more. middle of a tavern. Oh, no, I wasn't saying murder. I was saying scare the living fuck out of him, but all right. Well, I mean, if you want to, I could I just put know. a doll right behind him. I already shoved him to the floor. I think that's enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's better than I was going to do. So, I right, little man, what can I do for you? I believe my uh, compatriots here needed uh, some... Smoke bombs? Yes, I was looking for smoke bombs. Smoke what, bombs, um... What race is Mortimer? He's a human. Human, okay. The first character I've ever made that's human is evil. Go figure. Ha ha! Ha! Yeah. Um... So, uh... Johnny, you didn't want to, like, um... Do anything with the whole thieves can't thing? Oh, no, yeah. So that's what I was gonna do is, uh... I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, so I'm a mark of scribing gnome, so I can use a message at will, and I'm just gonna point at him and be like, I know you have other things here. Also, you yeah, know, no. sorry. Go ahead. Also, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna have a doll help Tim pick up the coins. Um, I think at seeing the doll, like, are you... it, it's, it's like a wooden puppet that looks like a lady, but it's like soaked in blood. Yeah, I think upon seeing this and probably like the fucking hairs probably like in front of the face as it leans down to help Oh, it's him. highly frazzled in all directions, yes. 
Yeah, uh, he's going to grab his crutch and try very frantically to crawl, crawl out the door as quickly as possible. Bah, 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 bah. But I only wanted to help you, says the doll. Um, <laughs> they, talk, they talk, how lovely. This is going to be a great Christmas. Um, with that and your comment, Johnny, the bartender kind of like gives you a little side eye, glances around. No, there's no one else in, in, in here. Everyone else is pretty much minding their own fucking business out, out in the middle of town. You watch as he kind of uh, motions the three of you to this door. And he walks in and he goes, I might have something that um, you may be interested in. Do you follow him? Sure. Insight check him. <laughs> oh, go ahead. You you guys can claim to do whatever kind of, like, with any other campaign that I run. If you go, hey, I want to do a perception check, or insight check, just call it out, roll uh, it, and I'll 15. give you what a... 15? Yeah. This man is trying to make a, make a deal with you. Okay. Make a sale. Yeah, he's he's got some shit. Yeah, he's got some shit for you. Now... Me, uh, me and my doll are following out. closely. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Chork? Yes. Are you, are you walking with him? Yeah, clank, 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 clank. <laughs> Clunkety, clunk, 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 clunk. He does give you a long stare, like, what the fuck is this thing? <laughs> Fucking ass clunk. Um, <laughs> uh, he lets the three of you walk in, and you walk into what looks like your typical spy movie mini room full of weapons and dun, gadgets. Dun, dun, like, dun, it's a dun, small... Dun, dun, dun. He, he, like, yeah. pulls the torch and it does the revolving doors thing from Men in Black. Oh, full on. You watch one entire, the middle section of this, like, 15-foot-long wall on your right side just flip around. Like, the it's like a shutter that just, like, whoop, and there's a small cage. There's, like, fucking, you see bear traps, lay, uh, uh, vials of poison, some, strangely, what looks like a couple pairs of regular size like regular boots uh you see these funny looking goggles a cloak scrolls what looks like flashbangs and this other thing that looks like it um. will go boom <laughs> and he closes the door behind him and goes hey boys we got um i don't have a lot i'm trying you know we have to cater to a very special clientele here in town we have as you can see i've got Bear traps, I've got blade poison, flashbangs, these boots, got a knife in it. Klaxon bombs, dark vision goggles, a cloak of stealth, scroll of haste, and scroll of invisibility. I wonder how much would you be charging for the goggles, cape, and flashbangs? Flashbangs, 50 gold pieces a pop. Yes. The ape would, or the cloak would be uh, 750 gold pieces. Mm. The goggles are 100, 100 gold pieces. So the these these are dark vision goggles. They're uh, you, you got to use a bonus action to activate them. I mean, I'm human, so I don't have dark vision. So mm. figured I'd ask. Yeah. The the flashbangs you would know throw at a single target. It would explode in their face, and they would have disadvantage on attacks for the next turn. Ah, um, uh, okay. The, the bladed poison, you would coat, uh, each file would have three applications, you would coat on your blade, it would give you an extra d6 of poison damage. The bear trap is a, uh, basic, base, you know, it's a bear trap. It's like a How much DC is the, uh, blade poison? Uh, 100 gold pieces of vial. Okay. Um, the bear trap would be a DC 14 deck save or deck save or prone. It knocks them prone. Okay. Uh, advantage to target if thrown. Uh, the knife boots give advantage on climbing. Bonus action attack for 1d4 damage. Minus 5 foot movement speed. A klaxon bomb is a distraction. Would be a 60 foot range thrown projectile for a DC-14 wisdom saving throw. How much are the klaxons? Uh, 50 gold pieces. Hmm. 
Then you have your regular scroll of haste is 500 gold pieces, and the scroll of invisibility would be 500 gold pieces. You know what? I think I'm going to go for the goggles and as many klaxons as I can get after that, which I think was two? The goggles were 150, right? 100. Oh, okay, so the goggles and then three klaxons. Mm. Oh, do you have only have the money that they gave you? Yes. Oh, so you didn't do the whole... I forgot oh, to yeah, add it before, doing... and I'm running with it. Okay, that's fine. Um, Alright, so go ahead and take that money out, add dark vision goggles. You don't need to attune to these, these are just worn on your head. It would be... What's the range? Uh, 60 feet. So it would be your basic dark vision for any race is 60 feet. Okie dokie. And yeah. then... Three... On the clack. Clacks on? Clacks on, yep. K-L-A-X-O-N. Yeah, yeah, that's how you yep. typically spell clacks on. Uh, you said okay. it was a DC 14 wisdom? Wis wisdom saving throw, yeah. What's the, the range? range? Uh, 60 feet. Oh, it's been a long time since I've seen you. I, yeah, I know. Why do you have sickness?